Yo, yo, yo. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. I hope everybody out there can hear me. This is the Nuclear Dad Blogcast, and I am your host, E.C. McKeever, a.k.a. The Nuclear Dad. Now, I know it's been a minute, and I will tell you the story at a later time. To make a long story short, 2023 was a very transformative year for me. And I needed to take time away. Sometimes we all got to do that. But I don't want you to think that I forgot about you. So with no further ado, uh, normal nuclear dad, broadcast, protocol, sit back, relax, get yourself something cool to drink, get yourself something good to eat and indulge in all of your indulgences and enjoy the ride. Let's go. Now, there's been a whole lot of shaking up in 2024. This year has started off with a bang, and there has not been a dull week since. Um, I saw something very disturbing today, and today is May 17, 2024. It is 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when I'm recording this. Who knows when it will be uploaded? But as of right now, today, I saw something very disturbing. It was a normal day. I woke up. My kids are homeschooled now. One of the reasons why I had to take a break. And uh, we're doing a homeschool thing. Had to return some packages to Amazon. I take a trip to the UPS store. Get some things to Walmart. Come back home. Doing the family thing. Now, I decided to make some candy fruit. I don't know if you guys seen this thing called cracked fruit. It's like candy apples with different fruits. So I wanted to try it. Long story short, I got some things. I made some candy fruit. It was okay. Not my cup of tea. Now, while I'm making my uh, sugary concoctions in the kitchen, I'm listening to YouTube. And I hear breaking news. P. Diddy. There's a video released of P. Diddy brutalizing his ex-girlfriend. This video is from 2016. And you might be wondering. Why would this be released eight years ago, from eight years ago now? Why is it being released now? I have my own theories. I'll spare you the details of what I think because who cares? I've listened to a lot of commentary because you know this candy making process was a long thing. And I continue to do my dad's stuff, my husband's stuff, my family stuff, my house stuff. And now it's the end of the day. And it's just not sitting well with me. And I said, you know what? My son's been telling me, you need to do more podcasts. I want you to record some stuff. And I keep saying, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Never got around to it. And I felt like today was the perfect time to dip my toe back into the water. And not necessarily to talk about Diddy per se, but he did strike a chord with me. He struck a nerve and What I want to talk about is domestic violence. I know everyone is um, talking about him and how terrible the thing he did was, and it is. But I think I may title this show, Diddy is a Role Model. Because people traditionally think of role models as someone you look up to, someone who is a guiding light, a shining star in your life, who teaches you the way to go. But just like all heroes you have the anti-hero you have the antithesis of the positive that you see from a person so diddy is a role model but he is the anti role model right and you know today we're gonna be delving deep into these societal issues and exploring solutions to help better people's futures because you know, the statistics on domestic violence are staggering. And I did a little research. I'm not going to be pulling from a bunch of different websites like I do on some of the previous shows. I just want to get down to the meat and potatoes because it's late. I want to go relax with my wife for a little bit before I nod off. Take a shower, put on some wonderful cologne, uh, let her rub her hands all over me, you know. Um, but I want to talk about this because... I knew a few people that were in these situations. I never saw anything, but I heard stories. Had an ex-girlfriend whose 
uh, brother divorced from his wife because of these type of things. And then it was revealed in conversation that her father used to abuse her mother. So, you know, sometimes this stuff doesn't fall far from the tree. Now, we've heard stories about what goes on in Hollywood and these drug fuel shenanigans and alcohol fuel shenanigans. And I've seen things like that personally in my life. Nobody abusing me, but, you know, people I know things on the street, you know, being in certain situations and people are all uh, hopped up and hyped up on some kind of substance and it brings out the darker side of their nature right and we can get into all of the uh aspects of this man's personality but i choose not to do that because i don't want to make it solely about him i want to talk about domestic violence and it goes both ways it's not always women getting abused because i know some women that are um they, they've been bruisers, you know, I could tell you some stories, but I like to leave people's personal business out of this, which is another reason why I'm not going to delve too deep into Mr. Combs. I don't want to focus solely on Mr. Combs. I mean, I know the social media algorithms are popping with his name. A couple days ago, it was some rappers that were going through some things. But prior to that, it was Mr. Combs since I believe uh, November of last year. So I don't want to bore you with my spiel, right? But I want to I want to shed some light on this and discuss the impact of domestic violence and give you some statistics and then offer some resources and also want to strongly, strongly, strongly condemn the perpetrators that do these things, male or female. Now, I'm a little biased when it comes to men abusing women because, you know, over here on the nuclear dad side of the universe the focus is on men being providers and protectors being the shining example of your what your kids should look up to and aspire to be be the man that you want your sons to be be the man that you want your daughters to go after or uh the type of man you want to court your daughter you want to give your children this example of positivity and we see actions from the children and the women and sometimes the trickle down effect. Sometimes there's Stockholm syndrome. There's all kinds of things that affect people. So, you know, this is what I, I want to get into today. And I, you know, these episodes are usually like an hour. I don't want to do that. I want to make it short, sweet. Um, if you know anybody that's abusing a woman, men, I want you to take appropriate action and I want you to interpret it that interpret that as you may, you know, whatever the situation calls for. I want you to be the type of man that stands up to the challenge. If you know a woman that's getting knocked around, do what you think is necessary. If it's involving law enforcement, do that. If it's enforcing law, do that. I'm not here to tell you what to do in every situation, but I'm telling you to do something. If you know somebody that's suffering from domestic abuse, domestic violence, verbal or physical or emotional, and it's in your power to do something, I want you to do something, whatever it might be. But we got to be our brother's keeper for the women, be our sister's keeper hold each other accountable because nobody deserves to live in a world where they are not safe at home. Home is supposed to be the place where you are safe from the world. How crazy is it that the world is dangerous? You got to come home and not know if you're going to be safe that night, having to walk on eggshells, having to put on makeup to conceal your bruises, having to miss days of work and social functions because you got a black eye or a broken rib. You know, these things are not acceptable. No longer. I mean, it never was, but there was a time in history where, you know, Men were upstanding uh, members of the community and they would go home at night and knock back a couple shots of whiskey, slap on their wife, beat the kids and do all kind of other things. No more. I'm calling for 
a stoppage of this. Anyone in the sound of my voice, if you have the power to do something, if you see something, say something, but we got to stop this. We got to protect the women. We got to protect the babies. That's our job as men. Let's get into this. Okay, now, domestic violence is um, it's often referred to as intimate partner violence. And it includes physical, emotional, sexual, and psychological abuse by a current or former partner or spouse. Now, this thing transcends age, time, ethnicity, uh, socioeconomic status. Uh, it's affecting millions of people globally in this country many other countries you know luckily we live in a country where people without a voice can have a voice in the sense of social media and social currency right but according to the world health organization almost one in three women worldwide have experienced physical or sexual violence by an intimate partner at some point in their lives. They're not, they're not even talking about the emotional abuse, the emotional violence, because, you know, some men, they don't put a hand on you. They don't abuse their partner sexually, but they may come home and browbeat them. You know, they may say stuff in a snarky, condescending way, and it may start off light in the beginning. But what you allow, you encourage, right? And I'm not victim blaming, but some people are predatory, especially men. Men are conquerors. So when they're not, sometimes when they feel as though they're not dominant in one area, they try to dominate somewhere else. If they're the laughing stock at work or in their social group, they may come home and take it out on their wife because that's the only place that they can dominate because physically they know that they are bigger and stronger and more dominant. So they may use that physicality to simply emotionally berate these people, berate these women. Because now we have all types of different relationships. You know, people have different orientations and you do what you want, but you know, my content is catered to married men with children but this subject matter and this topic is so encompassing it's so broad i gotta paint it with a big brush i gotta include everybody in this because you know the video triggered this talk right now but i know that there's somebody out there that may be listening to this and say well i'm a man married to a man or i'm a man a woman married to a woman i knew some females back in the day who dealt with females and I can tell you from personal experience I don't know what the stats are I'm not even gonna look them up but from personal experience I saw more violence with same-sex couples than I did with heterosexual couples now I don't know if that's something that is normal but my personal experience it was crazy it was crazy and I don't think it's right for anybody because this is how you ever see the movie called uh, Jennifer Lopez back in the day called Enough. She had enough. And if you didn't see it, it's a good movie. But I think that's something that every woman should watch. Anybody that's going through a domestic situation, watch that movie. I'm not saying do what she did, but I am saying when you get to the point where enough is enough, you're going to take some kind of action because again what you allow you encourage now, i'm not encouraging violence but i am encouraging balance i do believe in an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth that old school code of hammurabi if you don't know what it is look it up but i believe in that to an extent now i'm not the type to put hands on my wife or my children in an abusive manner. I do believe that children need a little correction sometimes, but I don't believe in violence and abuse and torture and, you know, beating someone till 
there's visible marks and scars and trauma and hospitalization. Like it's it's crazy. I I mean I don't want to sound like a hypocrite saying that I do believe in correction for my children because I am raising boys and I'm not one of those new school parents that believe you know you let your kids do everything and anything and talk to you any kind of way because I believe that is one of the reasons why this generation is the way that they are today um I'm sorry I'm adjusting something if you guys hear noise in the background hope that wasn't too loud but I believe that's one of the reasons why the kids are the way that they are today. Uh, I don't like to curse, but put it in broad terms, put it in layman's terms. Some of these kids deserved ass whoopings when they were younger and they wouldn't turn out the way that they do in the way that they are. Sorry, you can click off right now if you don't agree, but I'm raising boys and these boys will be men. And at some point, if there are men that are gonna be walking around when they're adults that or anything like the men that I grew up around and the men that raised us, there is going to be an incident where there may be some violence. And the last thing I want my sons to do is to run away and cower in the face of it. I want to teach my sons. I mean, one of the main reasons my sons get in trouble is because they're disrespecting their mother. Oh, you're not listening to mommy? You talking back to mommy? You being fresh? Let's have a talk. Let's correct that. And then you're going to apologize to your mother. One of the first things they learn is to respect women. And they learn that by respecting mom. They don't see me disrespecting mom. So ain't no way I'm going to let them disrespect mom. Now, I, I would do anything for my wife. But I also know that certain situations I have to be diplomatic about because I don't want to be the person raising my sons from behind a jail cell I don't want them visiting me in a prison for something I did now I do believe in taking up for my wife I do believe in taking up for women but again you got to play every situation delicately because you got to be able to think a couple of moves ahead. Reason why I'm teaching my sons how to play chess. So they can learn patience and strategy and to think moves ahead. If I do this, that will happen. If I do that, this may happen. We need to raise men to be thinkers and to not act out of emotion. Because a lot of this domestic violence that we see is men acting out of emotion and it's a terrible state that we're living in that I don't want to be sexist but I gotta say it the way it is women think because they feel men feel because we think I've said it before and I'll say it again women are the more emotive uh, part of the species they are known for being emotional and we have a lot of men who are raised by single women. Look at the case of Mr. Combs. I can't say whether or not he had a dominant real male role model in his life, but I do know his father passed when he was very young. So at some point there was an absence of a strong male figure that would have told him this is not how you treat women. And if you talk to some psychologists, they'll relate all of that back to issues with the mother. So maybe he sees, and, and some of these other men see their significant other, their wife, their, their girlfriend, their partner as their mother. And the things they wish they could do to her, they take out on their partner. I believe that is a reality. Can't confirm it. But I also can't deny the possibility. Now, some of the consequences of domestic violence. I'm getting a little teary eyed talking about this. Some of the consequences of domestic violence are very profound and 
long lasting, sometimes lifelong lasting because not everybody seeks therapy. Not everybody believes in therapy. Not everybody has the resources or so they believe to get therapy. And not everybody has the um, the confidence and the bravery to seek therapy. And victims that suffer from physical injuries, uh, they suffer from physical injuries, mental health issues such as depression and anxiety and chronic conditions like heart disease. Imagine having your heart broken to the point where you suffer from heart disease. And that's a little nugget to think about when you consider ailments being a result of emotional distress and physical trauma. Children who are exposed to domestic violence are more likely to suffer from emotional and behavioral problems. And they are at higher risk of being abused or being abusers themselves. Because children, they come into this world with a clean slate. It's like having a new computer. And if it's exposed to viruses, it's not going to operate properly. Human is the same way. When you expose these babies to all of this evil, what's going to be the outcome? And when we look at the abusers, why we are not diagnosing them, we have to have a little bit of empathy and at least our thinking and wonder what happened to you to turn you into this type of a person. Now, you know, I relate everything to spirit. Everything is spiritual and all spirits ain't good. Now, the economic toll of domestic violence is significant also because billions of dollars are spent every year due to health care costs, lost in productivity, like taking time off from work, having to quit jobs or not physically being able to go back to jobs or businesses. And legal expenses for the people who do leave and file lawsuits like Miss Ventura did with Mr. Combs. Now, this is a heavy episode, so I want to make it short. I can't talk for hours about this. I want to talk about uplifting and resources and tools and, you know, positivity and giving men that virtual high five that I always talk about and let you know that somebody's in your corner. I see you out there, you know, rooting for your your kids and, you know, being an advocate for your wife and doing what you got to do for the family and going out and busting your hump, coming home tired and exhausted, making sure those bills are paid and it's food on the table and it's clothes and it's heat in the winter and AC in the summer, you know, first world problems. But I digress. Now, I want to wrap this up um, with a couple of resources and, and some support. Now, if you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, know that there is help available. Now, you can call the domestic violence hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. That's 1-800-799-7233. The hotline.org. It offers 24 hours, seven days a week support via phone, chat, and text. And if all else fails, you know, the, I listen to these preppers sometimes, especially during the uh, 2020, when they were talking about go bags, right? Something happens, something break out, make sure you got your bag and go. If you in this situation, you better have your go bag because you can always go to a shelter or a crisis center. And they provide safe havens and necessary support services. Quick story. Um, if you don't know, most of my listeners know, I'm a massage therapist. Have been for 20 years. I do other things on the side, but I've been a massage therapist for the better half of this century. Sounds crazy to say. But I had this client one time who was a very nice woman. She was big too. And I don't mean like obese. Like she was a big woman. Um, 
like an Amazon. And I saw her a handful of times. And every time she would come in, she would have her daughter with her. And I asked her about her daughter. I think daughter was like seven or eight at the time. She's a very nice little girl, but very quiet. Um, very good manners. And I didn't know the signs. Now, as a massage therapist, we are what's called mandated reporters. If we see something, we have to say something, which is why I'm doing this show. I saw something and I got to say something. I don't necessarily have to report what Mr. Combs did because everybody knows. But I had to say this. I had to do this show. Now, back to this woman. Um, we talked. I talked to all my clients, but she was she was a little closed off. And after the second or third time of me seeing her, I noticed she was more relaxed around me. She was more open. She even laughed a little bit. But before, she was really, really closed off. And I later found out that she needed what was called safe touch, right? She needed to know that there were men out there that wouldn't hurt her because her husband was an abuser. I think, I don't know what he did. I'm not even gonna put that out there. Um, but I know she told me eventually that she was being abused. She alluded to her daughter being abused, but I don't know to what extent. And this takes me back to the go bag. And I said, well, you, you got to do something about it. You got to get out of it. You got to do something. And she said, I have a bag in my trunk. And one day I'm going to run. And I think her talking to me was slowly building up her confidence to know that she could get out of that situation. And she told me she had clothes, she had money, she had, I think, maybe some food, like some protein bars or something. She always kept a full tank, and she also had a 38 revolver in that bag. Because when she decided to leave, if he came after her, it would be like that J-Lo movie. And I don't know if this movie was out at the time. I think it was, but I don't know. But I know this woman was mentally preparing herself to make an exit by any means. I don't remember her name. I don't remember her ethnicity. I know she was fair skinned. She could have been Caucasian, but she looked like she may have been Hispanic from what I remember. It's a long time ago. But when she told me that, I was really concerned, obviously, but I could hear in her voice and I could tell by her mannerisms because I saw her a few times in a short span of time. Usually I see people once a month for a couple of months or, you know, once a week for a couple of months. I saw her like three or four times in about the span of a month, a month and a half. And when she told me about her go back, that was the last time I ever saw her. Don't know what happened to her. Don't know her name. But I pray that she got away. And I pray that she got away safe. Now, to all the men out there who engage in this type of behavior or condone this type of behavior, you're not only a criminal, but you're morally and spiritually a reprehensible piece of I can use that language. But it's time to break that cycle and take some responsibility. Now, this is what you can do. Seek help if you have abusive tendencies. Therapy, anger management, different programs. They can aid you in changing these harmful behaviors. I don't know if a zebra can change the stripes. But you can try. Stand against violence, men. If you witness abuse, intervene safely. Report it to the authorities. You gotta, you gotta be careful though, because some of these men aren't punks. They're just crazy. Some of them. Some men will cower when they see a man standing up, which is why things usually happen at home when no one's there to help. Some men don't care. But I'm hoping that we can all work together and make strides and hold these people accountable 
raise awareness, support the victims, because this is something that needs to be eradicated in our society. And I think together um, we can create a world where everybody can live free from fear and violence. Now, thank you. In closing, thank you for, if you made it this far, thank you for listening to this podcast. Um, stay safe and just know that silence is not an option when it comes to things like this not in my book um, it shouldn't be in yours either but in um, traditional nuclear dad fashion I'm going to sign off and I want you to remember to stay grounded stay positive stay dedicated Stay vigilant. Stay diligent. Remember your mission. And most importantly, gentlemen, stay cool.